world to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat, the human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sport. Brought to you by PepsiCo. In all 50 states, it pays to trust your car to the man who wears the star. And by Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous simply because it tastes so good. For real gusto and a great light beer, get together with Schlitz. This is Honolulu Stadium in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're at halftime of the 19th annual North-South Hula Bowl game. Aloha, everybody. This is Kurt Gowdy, along with Paul Christman. Beautiful. The old surfboarder. <laughs> <Yes, sir. laughs> and uh, the score here at halftime in the Hula Bowl game on ABC's Wide World of Sports is the Northern All-Stars 8 and the Southern All-Stars 3. The Hula Bowl is in its 19th uh, game tonight. We have a packed and jammed crowd on a beautiful Hawaiian night. Believe me, we've had a brilliant, sunshiny day here in this beautiful Garden Island. Uh, we had two days of rain before, and I think the natives were a little bit worried we'd be on national television to the mainland with a rainy day, very rare in Hawaii. But uh, did you ever see a, uh, a prettier day than we had today, Paul? I was one of the natives who was worried it was going <laughs> to rain. Actually, though, no, I have not seen a more beautiful day to the day. And this is the type of day I pictured for Hawaii, and I understand we'll have this indefinitely. We did have a couple of days of rain and just threw everybody into a tizzy, but that's all over now. All right, the score is 8-3. The Northern All-Stars out in front. We're going to be bringing you the second half. You're going to see 23 All-Americans on the 50 uh, players representing both teams, the North against the South. You're going to see four of the finest quarterbacks in America. You're going to see 13 consensus All-American players in this game. It was more of a defensive struggle in the first half. The South took an early lead, three to nothing, on a field goal by Larry Zeno. Then the North came back with a quarterback uh, drive engineered by uh, Bob Berry of Oregon. They went 91 yards for a touchdown. They went for the two points, and that's the score, eight to three. Now we're going to show you some of the highlights of the play-by-play -play of the first half in the hula ball, as we call them on videotape. All right, third down, seven. Horton fading again, throwing the same one to Lamb. He hits him. He's got him on the 14-yard line, and he's hit by number 35, Tom Bond, playing the defensive right halfback spot. And there is another South first down. South ball now on the 15-yard line of the North. So this is a 65-yard sustained drive so far by the South. South on the North 15. In that I formation, this is Gail Sayers as he tries to blast off tackle, picks up three yards to the north 12-yard line. Milk flag number 85 and uh, Dick Butkus number 50 in on the stop for the north. Second down, seven for the south. There he is, number 48. Kurt, I want to see Mr. Sayers get a little daylight because he can really pick him up and lay him down. Well, he broke about five or six runs this year, Paul, of over 80 yards. <laughs> On second and seven, Morton rolling out, and that pass is intercepted. No, wait a minute. They're calling it an incomplete forward pass. Dick Buckus, number 50, from the University of Illinois, thought he had that one, but they're calling that a trap ball and an incomplete pass. And if you're wondering what happened to Martin's throw there, I'll tell you exactly what happened. In the middle of his throw, in the middle of the throw, he decided to hold the ball keep possession, and it got off his fingertips, came out at a peculiar nose-down attitude, but that's what happened. He just couldn't quite hold it as he put the power on the throw. They have no score here in the hula ball game, first period. Third down, seven to go. Fairs in motion. Morton fading. He is trying to find a secondary receiver. Hits the tight end, Schraub. Schraub's to the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. And he was uh, the tight end, faded back behind the line of scrimmage, and was playing it as a safety valve man. 
Frank Broyles oh, so is coaching the South team. And it now watches his team with a fourth down on the line of the line of the North. Fourth down and four. Pat Donnelly made that last tackle for the North. Frank Broyles, who's Arkansas Razorback, who just voted the number one college team of the past year. Now a field goal attempt. Larry Zeno is going to attempt a field goal. Mike Hafner, his teammate at UCLA, will hold. It'll be kicked from the 15-yard uh, line. And here is the boot, and the kick is good. <laughs> North has the ball in the South 46. The score is 3-0 in favor of the South. Hula ball game. McLuhan in motion. Draw play. Coming through is Junior Coffee running with power. He goes to the 34-yard line. And another North first down. And Coffee really sprung loose. Looks like he was burst out of a cannon on that one, Paul. He was indeed. He got a little headroom there, Kurt, a little air, and he, and he really took it. He broke away beautifully. But this is the type of game, of course, where the draw play is really effective because teams drill by the hour. When they see the draw coming, one lineman or two linemen, three linemen, holler draw, and they all seem to concentrate on it. They haven't had time to perfect those little things in this ball game. Bob Berry running his line has come all the way from the north nine-yard line. Berry under pressure. Gets loose, fires deep, he's got him for a touchdown. That's Jeff Jordan, number 24 of Tulsa. And that's a 91-yard drive for the North as they go out in front. Let's watch Jordan now in this touchdown play. Straight away, he'll give you a little foot fake here or there, but he's going straight away generally. That was a little slow down, and then he turned on the speed there, and it was a beautiful throw right over the defender. They slowed down, Paul, when he saw Barry in trouble. Barry had two men on him. And still got rid of the ball. Mike Hafter, 41, and Fred Hill, 82, were the two defenders trying to cover Jordan. And so the North went 91 yards on this sustained drive. And a big hand is for Bob Berry, the quarterback, who goes out. He took him down as he replaced Jerry Rome in the lineup. They have the option of going for one or two points now. The North leading 6-3. to three. And they're going to go for two points. Jerry Rome's in a quarterback. Rome fires and completes the pass. It is good. A two-point conversion. As he hit Tony Yakabazi, the tight end, for the two-pointer. Hal Phillip tackled him and was dragged into the end zone. And so the score now is the North 8 and the South 3. Well, with the score of the North 8 and the South 3, we had expected a high-scoring game. But the defense is dominated in the first half. What about the second half? Well, let's, let's mention that there is a rule applied to this game that a team behind can receive or kick off any time they want during the game. So that'll be a factor in the second half. Yes, it will. And I think our running, as we mentioned, is a little hard to perfect in a short time like this. Very few practice sessions. So they end up depending on great speed, sheer speed, for the running attack. Uh, stuff like the draw really works because the defense hasn't had time to get used to. That is the draw play. But actually, of course, it figures to be mainly a passing game. And surprisingly enough, in the first half, of all the four quarterbacks, the most effective has been Bob Berry from the West Coast of Oregon. And again, also, we mentioned the direct contrast of Berry throwing the line drive and Jerry Rome, his teammate, with all the records, throwing the arching football, which arrives at the same time because Rome throws a little earlier. We'll see how they go in the second half of the play-by-play. -play. Now, uh, before the second half starts, let's take a look. Hello, I'm Richard Basart. Next Monday night on a voyage to the bottom of the sea, I face a mutiny aboard the Seaview and the most incredible and frightening sea creature ever captured on film. Right here on this station, you see exciting scenes like these. Ship is my responsibility. Is a hanging offense, Captain. Far one. He drew a gun on me. See you. You little shit. I'm building a ship. Building it. All of you. Admiral Nelson's strange behavior alarms his crew Monday night at 7:30, 6:30 Central Time on ABC. Uh, before the second half starts, let's take a look at some of the halftime activities here of the hula ball game.
That was the Hawaiian national anthem, Hawaii Ponui. Now here's the crowd at halftime in Honolulu waiting for the hula girls, a traditional part of the halftime entertainment of the hula ball. This is Aloha Ia O Waini. Why Time here at the hula ball. Now this is Hano Hano. just came back on the field and I have never seen them take a give a double take like they did with the tool going on on the field.
We have some statistics now at uh, halftime. First downs in the first half, the South had nine first downs to six for the North. The South hit 11 out of the 22 passes. The North had nine out of 17. Passing yardage was about even, 130 yards for the South, 133 for the North. The South made 78 yards by rushing. 44 of those picked up in one spurt by Gale Serres, and the North had only one yard by rushing. Now as we come out for the second half, on the left is the Northern team. They're in white pants and red jerseys. We had a little mix up here of white uniforms. The white jerseys arrived for one of the teams, but they did not fit. They were too small. So the jerseys are not as contrasty, if there is such a word, as uh, you normally see uh, between two teams. This is the South team. They're in blue jerseys and blue pants. But you'll be able to distinguish the uh, Northern team with their white pants and the jerseys a bit lighter. Larry Zeno of the South and UCLA is going to kick off. And deep is number 32, Kent McLuhan of the University of Nebraska. And we're ready to go now for the second half of the hula ball game from Honolulu. With the North out in front, 8-3. to three. And the North now is picking up the ball and bringing it back to Tony Yakabazi of Iowa University, number 80. He's brought down on his own 27-yard line. It'll be first down. Jim Grisham, number 45 of Oklahoma, made the tackle. Bob Berry from Oregon University, who compiled all the all-time records at Oregon during his three years. He has Junior Coffee and Kent McLuhan behind him in the I formation. Here's Berry running the rollout pattern. He completes it and uh, stops his number 80, Yakabazi of Iowa, on the 33-yard line of the North Jim Grisham, number 45, made the tackle. He's playing the monster or the roving man in the South defense. Well, that play is good for six yards. It is second down and four to go. Remember now in this game, when a team is scored upon, if they're behind, they can uh, choose to receive again. So we may have one right down to the wires. We did in the North-South game in Miami on Christmas Day, which was televised by ABC. Jim Jones is the flanker right, and Jeff Jordan is foot left and is very retreats out of the pocket. He's firing deep, and that one is incomplete. Intended for Kent McLuhan, number uh, 32, and broken up by 82, Fred Hill of USC. It is third down now, and fourth is uh, four to go for the Northern All-Stars on their own 33-yard line. You know, Kurt, we have seen very little of the long pass in this ballgame. I suppose the reason for that being that uh, it's pretty hard to perfect in a few practice sessions, the timing of the long ball, getting, getting to know the speed of every receiver going downfield for long yardage. They can hit them all on the short one. The North running out of the I formation. McLuhan goes in motion. Bob Berry rolling left. He's going to run it, and he has jumped out along the 35-yard line. There's Berry staying right on the sideline. Now he's maybe going back into the game. Barry was taken out by Roy Jefferson, number 80. The defensive right into the south. He seems to, uh, well, he's all right, limping slightly. And now we're fourth down on the 35-yard line. It'll be four. He's sliding in. See, he's curling, but he's sliding in after he curls. Tom Barry, the Oregon boy. Outside, great outside. Now a punt formation. Redmond in punt formation gets a beautiful spiral away. Larry Elkins, the Baylor, brings it up to the 35, and he's dropped on the 37-yard line. Elkins hit down by Glenn Ressler, number 53. Voted the outstanding player in the East this year. He's playing center. He was a guard at Penn State. So now we'll watch the South in action. The South on their own 37-yard line. Greg Morton's a quarterback with Hal Phillip and Gail Sayers behind him. Echo Sayers motion. A quick pitch out to Sayers with running room. Sayers, <laughs> really can, uh, the old saying, pick him up and put him down. You saw him pick him up that time. He's knocked out of bounds by uh, Pat Donnelly of the Navy, number 38. And he's taken out on his own 40-yard line. 
for a three-yard gain. Gale Sayers, number 48 of the University of Kansas. We'll notice again the next time he runs, he has a very peculiar leg motion. He 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 jumps, sort of jumps as he runs every once in a while, like kind of like a lope. Second down. And it's a draw play. There's again on the halfback draw. Runs it to the 43 yard line this time. Sayers holds the all time ground gaining records in the Big Eight Conference for career. Dick Butkus, the All American linebacker from Illinois, tackling on the South 43 yard line. Gain of three. It is third down and four to go for the South. They're trailing in this hula ball game, eight to three. We're early here in the sec in, uh, second half. Elkins is flanked right. And now Zeno's in the game. Larry Zeno at quarterback from UCLA running the option play. He's a runner and a passer, and they use him on the option. He has stopped on the 46-yard line of the South. Nicky Bitzko playing linebacker, number 20 of Dayton, and Lowell Dean, number 73, from Morgan University, the left tackle. They have a fourth down now. Fourth down and a yard to go, and they're going for it. This is Larry Zeno, UCLA. Uh-oh. Broken signal. As the flags drop, we had only two or three penalties in the first half of this hula ball game. Both sides. Well, we'll start over again with fourth down and a yard to go. And the South, trailing 8-3, to three, is going for this first down. Here's Zeno running the option play. Zeno is hit and dropped. A great charge there. As breaking through was Rick Cooper, number 79, from Oregon State, weighing 250 pounds. And the North takes over now. Big car stalled by tiny ice crystals. Ice crystals that can form in your carburetor in damp, raw, chilly weather like this. Carburetor ice can choke off the flow of gasoline and stall your engine. Carburetor icing is one more reason to change to... Texaco Sky Chief. It's localized for you. Localized. Specially made for the driving conditions in your area. Right now, where icing stalls are a problem, Sky Chief gasoline is localized with... Ice check. Ice check prevents icing stalls by keeping harmful crystals from forming in your carburetor. Get Texaco Sky Chief gasoline with ice check. It's one more way Sky Chief is localized for the driving conditions in your area. Texaco Sky Chief. Localized now with ice check. Get it at this sign. You can touch your car to the man who is the star. The big bright Texaco star. Our score here in the hula ball in the third quarter is the North 8 and the South 3. The North now has just taken over in Southern Territory on the 43-yard line of the South. Jerry Rome, the quarterback. Rome under pressure is dropped back in his own 46-yard line. Number 51 is Ken Henson of TCU in on him. And also Larry Price, number 78. The defensive boys have stood out in this game. They have stopped the offense most of the way, except for one 91-yard drive that the North put on in the second quarter for a touchdown. Now the North has the ball in their own territory on their 46. They have second down and 22 yards to go. Jerry Rome, who broke 17 passing records this year at Tulsa, the quarterback. Coffee's the fullback, McCoon's the halfback going in motion. Here's Rome. Going to Jordan, his teammate at Tulsa, and he can't hold on to it. Now, Jordan, in the first half, was the star pass receiver of the game, and he was catching bullet passes high over his head. That one was right to him, and he couldn't hold on to it. Ball. I was just going to say, he was the uh, most spectacular receiver of the first half, and when he gets with Jerry Rome, his old teammate, drops the first one right in his lap. Rome will have a few things to say to him about that. In fact, they're roommates uh, on the trip to Tulsa U. <laughs> Mr. Manley, we'll get a close-up of that boy, Jeff Jordan. Wayne Harden calls him one of the most underrated college players he's ever seen. He is a very skinny boy. Looks like they break him in two. He weighs 190, but he's 6'4". We'll get a close-up of him sometime here in the second half. He's a split left turn. There he is. And here's Rome fading again. 
scrambling around. Now he's trying to run it, and he's pounced on and dropped on the 44-yard line of the North. Hitting him down is number 51, Ken Henson, H-E-N-S-O-N from TCU. And also in on the play was Roy Jefferson, number 80 from Utah. So it's now in the North 44, and they have a fourth down and 20 yards to go. Larry Elkins is dropping back as a deep safety man for the South. Rick Redman is in front formation for the North. He's done a very fine job of punting in this game. He's from the University of Washington. <laughs> Here's his kick. Larry Elkins, safety man, coming through at the 40. He's at the 45. If he gets a block, he may go. Elkins is at the 35, and Larry Elkins is going all the way. Larry Elkins, who holds the all-time pass receiving record the last two years. Frank Royals was telling us before the game how strong he was. I think that shows it, Paul. That's it exactly, Kurt. Frank Royals told us that after he is not only a great receiver, but he has great strength, and he literally breaks tacklers, runs over them. And in this case, he did. Two or three people had a good shot at him. That wasn't weak tackling. He is really a strong young man. He just broke right through a couple of them. There he is. Larry Elkins, an All-American the last two years. Oh, yeah. and a, a broken NCAA record year before last when Don Truel used to throw to him. So then they'll be teamed up together with the Houston Oilers next year. He caught uh, 70 passes in 1963, caught only 50 this year. But for two years, he holds the all-time pass receiving record. And you see how he can run. Now they're going for the two points. The top with the ball. Craig Morton of California throwing, and it's broken up. But we have a penalty marker down. A penalty marker is down. The score is 9-8 uh, to eight now, the South leading. And let's see what this one's for in the end zone. Looks like it's against the North, 87. Jones, Jeff Jones. Offensive pass interference, Kurt. That's what he's calling. There's a little pushing going on as that ball is going through the air. By the way, while we have a pause here, many of you have asked for information about the ABC Wide World of Sports book, so here are the details. Hello, I'm Jim McKay. The Olympic year of 1964 was a great year in sports, and from the opening ceremony to the Winter Olympics in January to the AFL Championship game in December, the entire year of sports from around the world is right here in this beautiful new book, ABC Wide World of Sports. Now, there are more than 300 photographs and drawings by Robert Rieger from our top shows. Skiing, skating, Grand Prix motor racing, thoroughbred horse racing, basketball, bowling, golf, the Davis Cup, the America's Cup, and featuring, of course, our golden year in track and field. The drawings and sequence photographs show the details and the techniques of all the action for everybody who participates actively in sports. Now, if you'd like a copy, here's what you do. Send $2, a check or money order, to ABC Wide World of Sports Books, Box 17, Brooklyn 1, New York. I'll give it to you again. That's $2, which includes handling and mailing costs, to ABC Wide World of Sports Books, Box 17, Brooklyn 1, New York. Please allow three weeks for delivery. And by the way, please join us in the weeks to come for more excitement coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. There's Jeff Jordan, the University of Tulsa boy, playing uh, flank back. <laughs> we wanted to show you this kid. He has made some great catches. Look at those skinny legs on him. And they fell with him when he's up in the air four or five times in the first half. But he's strong and wiry, and you'll be seeing him do some more. A pass receiving here in the second half of the hula ball. Larry Alkins, 76-yard punt return, has put the South out in front now by a score of 9-8. to eight. They're kicking off. Zeno is booting. This is Clarence Williams of Washington State with a good run. And he brings it out to his own. 29-yard line, Clarence Williams, All-American of Washington State, played on a losing team, but uh, caught everybody's eye with his offensive and especially his defensive play this year. Marvelous defensive player. First down for the North now on the North, 29. After Elkins' tremendous punt return, we almost saw the same thing going in the other direction there. Gary Romer Tulsa is quarterbacking. Bends McLuhan in motion. Follows uh, the blocker, Junior Coffey, out. Trying to throw and runs it. Couldn't find anybody open and gets to his own 33-yard line, and that's it. 
He was brought down by Larry Price, a hometown Honolulu boy who weighs 260 pounds. There he is, number 78, and he's probably the biggest man on the field. He's been the middle uh, guard and linebacker for the University of Hawaii here. 11,000 students. For years, they have played teams in the mainland. Very much of the sport enthusiasts here on this island. They love their sport, especially football. Yes, in high school games, we're told, draw up to 25, 27,000 people. Here's second down now, six to go. Room is hit and dropped in the 26-yard line. Crashing through is number 51, Ken Hansen, and number 80, Roy Jefferson. They have been outstanding defensive players for the South. Here's Bob Berry coming back into the game. Rome has had trouble getting on track, finding receivers open. I think also, Kurt, the uh, opponents know that Rome does not quite move around as rapidly as his replacement here, uh, Bob Berry, so they can put the pressure on him on the inside of that pocket. Bob Berry now of Oregon University. Gives it on the draw play to Junior Coffee, and Coffee's hit down on the 28-yard line. He's brought down by 83, Bill Jenkins. And by Larry Price also. So the northern team now is forced into a punt formation. And let's see if they kick this ball again and give Mr. Larry Elkins, the All-American of Baylor, a chance to run it back. Last time he ran it back 76 yards for a touchdown. Rick Redmond's in punt formation. And there's Larry Elkins. He is standing around his 35-yard line. He'll have to hurry this one. He go oh, a good kick. And this one is out of bounds. How's that for a recovery by Rick Redman? When it uh, looked like he might be in real trouble on fourth down with that low pass fumble from center. And then gets that kick away, Paul. He should fumble more often if he's going to keep kicking like that. You're running well ahead of the storm. The wind is up. The sea is building. But you know there's a quiet harbor waiting. And it's just around that jetty. Nice going. Secure the line. The smoking lamp is lit. Enjoy a camel. Camel time. It's camel time. Camel time. It's flavor time for you. Camel time. When no other cigarette will do. Camel gives you easygoing taste, honest enjoyment, choice quality tobacco. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Tobacco, taste the best. Right now, make it camel time. Camel, camel, camel. Liberace hosts the Hollywood Palace tonight on ABC.